the, the first thing you have to do is learn to listen. You have to, uh, it, it may seem odd, but a lot of people don't spend time, listening is a discipline. Uh, so you have to listen very closely to when people are speaking and try and um, draw their memories uh, from uh, listening, listening to them. There are various different ways that you can do oral history, but I prefer a more flexible open approach where you have areas that you want to cover, but you don't have specific questions because there's an old saying that if you ask questions, all you get are answers. And, you know, you, can off, you could say something like, you know, did you go to school? And they'll say, yes. Um, so it's better to think about open-ended questions which draws people's memory out, like, um, ha, you know, what was the journey to school? How did you go about it? These kind of open-ended uh, questions uh, work much better in, these kind, in oral history interviews. And so people can relax and begin to tell um, the stories uh, of their lives. Um, so, so, so there are particular ways in which you can um, you can draw memories depending from your interviewee. But a really important thing to do is to remember that the reason why they agree to be interviewed, and it's often someone who, either whom you know, like your grandmother or your um, mother or father, or, or it's someone that whose, whose house you've gone to to interview about a particular event or um, just even about their life experiences, um, that the reason why they agreed to be interviewed might not be the reason why you want to interview them. So you have to think, um, okay, so quite often it might be something as simple as the fact that they're lonely. Um, and so letting them talk is really important. Um, but it could also be that they have a story they want to tell you that's not your agenda. So you have to be flexible enough to think about that. Um, oral history is quite a, a particular method where you bring the past into the present. It, colla it collapses time. So you, you bring the past into the present and make the source yourself with some other person. That's the uniqueness of it. It doesn't mean that other sources, other memory sources don't bring the past in the present, but when you're, um, it's, it's, it's kind of a biography and sometimes if you want to give authority to the person whom you're speaking with, um, it's a, you can call it an autobiography. But it, the written form, they have much more control over and they say what they want to say through the, through the written word. And it is also about the translation of memory into writing. Whereas the thing about oral history is that they are speaking, it's a much more intimate form than any other kind of historical source, except maybe diaries or which aren't intended to be seen uh, necessarily, whereas oral history is um, making a, a public record. Now, it varies from country to country. In the United States, oral history must be archived or it is not called oral history because the, the um, history of it in the United States is very much as an archival practice. But in countries where it, like England and Australia and um, where it had a social context, it, it was originally for to talk to people who were hidden from history or absent from history. It is, it is a much more, um, much more concerned with just getting them on the record. Uh, so whether or not it's archived or thrown into a drawer is not, um, is still, is not essential in Australian oral history, for example. I think that you have to like people. Um, it's very much a, um, it's, it's about harnessing conversation in a really important sense. And the way people remember interests me, uh, the way people make meaning out of their lives and the stories they tell themselves. So it's not just about historians standing on high and making these kind of pronouncements about what happened in history. It's about you talking to the people who experienced it. 
And that's the reason why you do oral history, because you want to hear their voices, not because, um, <laughs> uh, you know, you want to know facts necessarily, because memory is very um, unreliable. It's about the truth of their experience. So that's, that is one of the reasons I love it. Um, you, you have to have a big humanitarian streak. Uh, so, yeah, I do like that, the, listening to people make meaning out of their, their past.